who live here, um, but about the mass, um, the, the land mass, and, and of course the resources. And from the perspective of um, the global uh, shifts of, um, let's say, climate, um, I, I think that will be the uh, really only place for us to uh, migrate on on a mass scale at some points and build infrastructures real fast to be able to um, serve uh, the amount of people who will be escaping current states of how nature will be um, basically acting. So we'll have to be prepared. Um, we don't know the timelines of that. Before that, governments will try to do everything for us not to move and to basically um, not to know um, and not to react to these things um, in advance. Um, but um, I have a very strong sense that um, not in this country, but the future of this land and is going to be welcoming a lot of people um, once we have no other place to go. Um, so that's from a perspective of geographical po positioning, um, but from perspective of cultural heritage and um, like the influence and the history, I think um, the this country, the people have a lot of experience, um, and uh, experience is uh, through living through revolution and in twenty seven in sorry nineteen seventeen and going uh, into a mode of dictatorship and uh, going into the mode of you know, socialism and uh, finally going out of it in the 90s, um, still through very um, difficult stages. We obviously haven't um, left, uh, you know, the kind of like bridge period of becoming a democracy. But I do question whether democracy is the way to go. And um, yeah, I, I just and, and also another thing is like the, the people who uh, lived here for the past 110 more years, uh, we didn't have religion, but we're highly spiritual people. And um, that how somehow that played an interesting role in um, the development of the uh, respect to each other and the social um, uh, coherence. Uh, people are very uh, supportive of each other, and um, it's 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 quite interesting to for me from living in the U.S. for more than fifteen years, and um, then coming back to these homelands, uh, I see how um, this individualism of the U.S. Um, has not really been affecting like the mental health of the say the pandemic in twenty twenty versus here um, nobody really suffered we just didn't comply to anything that was happening we're just like no I'm responsible for my health you know so it's it's a it's a very very difficult like topic for me to speak about whether it's like you know the west the west uh, and uh, like say my country is different um, and, and they're, they're kind of opposing each other I do believe that there is um, a greater plan behind uh, what's happening and um, in the end of the game, I believe that we, you know, this, this is, this is something is going to come out of it that we don't expect. Uh, something's, down, something's going to un unveil. Um, I believe it's going to be more than, um, you know, again the pandemic or the war between these countries. I think it will be something much more important, and that's when this country will go into the stage um, of uh, a good guy. I believe that somehow yeah um, i would think that latin america will be the region because one the americas historically have been the escape region like all the europeans whether economic or religious hardship have been coming to the americas for hundreds of years to the it's a really big land mass but it has more waterways the big issue with russia is it doesn't have many rivers internally that allows for good shipping and logistics and it's got a lot of land but not a lot of ocean that's usable like the arctic is where all the ocean is but it's not super usable in contrast almost every latin american country has an ocean border and pretty good rivers and waters as well. And then you have the competitiveness because of the one language. So it's easy to move between the countries. There's a single language and there's many jurisdictions to choose from. 
and then it's the proximity and time zone of the richest economy, the US, that also I think is very advantageous. So my, I'm um, personally a big Asia guy. I like the efficiency of Asia and they got some um, pretty competitive countries, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, all really good quality of life for the price. I can't become Asian. Whereas Latin America, you can become citizen, you can integrate this. And that's like, seems to be unique to the Americas that they'll just give you citizenship for being born there. They don't have this like, ah, oh, we can, it's our bloodline special and no one else can be a part of our country or our citizenship. But I, yeah, I, yeah, it's it welcoming, was, welcoming lands over there. I agree. Latin America, but it's kind of shitty. That's the the downside, right? It's they don't care. I read a tweet that was something like, "All Latins care about is eating, dancing, and fucking." <laughs> That's pretty. It's not far from the truth. And thus, they don't get stuff, like things break. Because it's like, ah, yeah, we were going to fix it, but there was a fiesta. So we went and partied. And to manana, tomorrow we'll fix it. So right. that's the downside. But my hope is as more like Westerners move down, they'll start to fix these issues in the uh, crew. Dare, dare I say colonize? <laughs> Just fix uh, I mean, a little bit. Fix. I don't mind that word. I, <laughs> I think colonize means to bring civilization, right? Um, uh, let's look up the etymology of uh, colonize. You know, I, I heard also somewhere that the Latin and South America and, and um, African countries are more body oriented, uh, while the North um, is more brain oriented. And we live in the society or during the time in our civilization where the body and mind has to be integrated, like the balance of the feminine and the masculine within us. And when it's done, when we're integrated, uh, you know, whether through colonization or integration or communication or trade, or education, that's when we'll reach a consensus as humanity what to do, uh, what how to move forward, I think. Beautiful. Beautifully. Um, yeah. At my graduation speech uh, in college, Van Jones was the speaker. And he had a pretty dope speech about how you need both, you need two wings to fly, the left wing and the right wing. Mm -hmm. And that without it, like you can't take flight. So it kind of reminds me of that. Yeah. The, the duality to life. You do need some degree of like openness and the other things the left bring to prevent the like authoritarian tendencies of the right. Well, yeah, it's like a, a battery and polarity and even just the world is run, the energy that runs through the world is from the polarity of the, the poles of the earth. Elect yeah. Electromagnetism. Um, yeah, it makes sense. So yeah, it's, we'll see how it plays out. I really hope the Zeddies are able to survive because they seem to be the best hope we have getting that hybrid in a Latin Anglo-Saxon country with high autonomy, innovation, 
they already have legal tender with crypto and Prospera and they're working on all kinds of other cool stuff. So it's, um, hoping and there I say praying for them. Yeah, it's about the modeling, you know, if, if you can model in a way that is inspiring for other tribes to uh, learn from you, then um, you're, you know, you're one of those OGs, uh, original inspiration for what else is possible. Um, because if we don't have any models, uh, then how do we even imagine, right? Wow, well, very well said. Um, can you elaborate on that or so for more? Um, well, to me, modeling is presenting what is possible, like, uh, inspiring or even aspiring aspiration. Yeah. So, so like, uh, Hong Kong, um, in which like, way isn't, isn't Hong Kong very, it's like a model of freedom and is very inspiring. Uh, at least in Asia, right? Right. For the Asian countries, it is, I believe so. And, or Singapore. And, and, yeah, S Singapore, of course. And what Dubai is doing, and now Saudi Arabia as well, is showing certain, you know, skill sets to build new cities, stuff like that. Um, and, of course, um, yeah. what some, um, like, Prospero-like um, organizations... I mean, there are only so many stars in the game right now. Let's be honest. Like, if we really to create the list, it's not a big list yet. Yeah, I think... Um, uh, the reality of, like, I guess, power and physical force in order to enable a free environment. I mean, that's, that's always kind of been like a, a prerequisite for having a, an environment that allows for freedom and flourishing. But obviously the tenuous nature of having that power and where it comes from uh, often keeps environments free <laughs> it, it turns into tyranny really quickly and so it's like the nature of the power like where is the power derived from and so like america it was supposed to be from the people and the right to bear arms and the right to speech obviously which kind of fended off uh you know a good amount of the i guess corruption i don't know i guess a little while at least <laughs> um but, um, and, and so like the concept of the militia, but where power ha has concentrated and always ends up concentrating is, uh, is in the money. And so obviously the next step is decentralizing the money. And that's going to be really, really hard and really painful because we are all highly dependent on the dollar as the unit of account for uh, decision making. So we need to recalibrate our brains to valuing things, maybe not necessarily in uh, the dollar as a unit of account. I don't know. It's a tough problem. Um, I don't buy the, the dollar unit of account thing. Like, you can't beat that. I think you can. It's just you have to... Um, it's not going to be an immediate uh, process. It's not going to be, like, an overnight... I, I guess it can be, but... Um, it seems so low on the list of priorities. Like, we have Bitcoin. Dollars is the unit of account can just be like you have you need a unit of account for people to communicate just like you need a language for people to communicate the dollar is the king 
if it's not dollars, it will be like euros or francs or whatever. It doesn't really matter that much. I don't think. But it does because it, uh, I mean, there needs to be at least a plan to unyoke yourself from the dollar and unyoke yourself from uh, the territory. If you want to have a unit of account, get some territory. What if the territory is decentralized? I'm open to that. Decentralized in um, uh, anchoring in the different jurisdictions around the world that could support that. And the unit of account wouldn't be the uh, cryptocurrency, but it would be actual real new currency. Yeah, I think everything comes to getting territory. If you don't have territory, then you get crushed. Because at the end, we're physical beings in a physical world. Yeah, it's a bit yes, you can just be a non and mess around on the internet in your hacker community. Yeah. But if you want to have the freedom to, say, not get vaccinated in 50 years, well, you better have territory. So, yeah, I'm a that's the ultimate, guy ul ultimate safe space. The... Yeah, the the space can be a really, the space can be really safe when the territory is shared and yeah, there is a consensus around, you know, what's that territory and um, yeah, in in order for us to you know to lead civilizational shift uh, within our lifetimes. There has to be uh, safe havens um, created across different territories. I'm still very interested um, to 